Christians many times are the very bottom line. They suffer the most in these lands. The children and those of different belief systems are the ones suffering. It's an amazing thing. But yet, the Christianos endure. They stand their ground. They proclaim the message wherever they go. Their leaders suffer. Many times they're the ones that get it the hardest. But yet, we have to remind ourselves, we have to remind each other, we have to remember history is marked by the blood of the saints, and yet remember this was a promise from the Lord Jesus. He said it would be this way. He promised it. Jesus said in Matthew 5, listen to these wonderful words from Jesus, the finest and most beautiful sermon ever preached on earth by the lips of any man was the, the beautiful sermon on the mount. And in the introduction to his sermon, he gives the blessings. Some of the most beautiful words you will ever read are found here. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. They will inherit the earth. For the uh, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those, here's the promise, who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, when they persecute you falsely and say all kinds of evil against you because of Me. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus said it was going to be this way. And those apostles had the words of Jesus. They were communicating it. They were telling the message. They were sacrificing their neck. How did they get such a name as Christianos? Well, they got it because they suffered for Christ. They also got it because they preached about Christ. It says they were telling the message. <coughs> It says in verse 20, they were telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. Now whether this message is spoken like James and John, the sons of thunder, who railed and proclaimed the words of Jesus in such a way they had the nickname, sons of thunder, or if it's spoken quietly and it's ministered gently and peacefully, no matter how the message has been spoken. It is the message that has marked the followers of Christos. It is this message that has been declared and they have been clearly associated with Christos. They, this message was preached to the Jews, their own people first. Then it was preached across culture. And it was preached their preaching associated them with Jesus. Forever they would be associated with Christ because of what they believed about Jesus Christ. Listen, when we say we're Christians, we're not just saying we go to the church down the street. When we say we're Christians, we're saying, I am associated with the Son of the living God. He is my Lord, in Greek, my Kyrios, Lord, and He's my Savior, Soter. 
He is my Savior and my Lord. That makes me a Christian. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, when we're saying we are Christianos, it's not a careless thing. Many in today's society water and soften the message. Listen, I'm just happy the message is out there. That's all I can say. But make no mistake about it, please. <clears throat> Jesus is curious and so tear to those that confess it. Scripture says we cannot say He is Lord and Savior except by the Holy Spirit. In the time of the Roman Empire, the confession had to be Caesar is Lord. The Christianos, if they were going to be true to Christ, could never say Caesar is Lord. They had to only say Jesus is Lord. Somebody will say, well, you can say anything. Maybe that's true if it only is words. But if it is much more than words, it is what we believe. If we believe He suffered and died for our sins and we're trusting in His sacrifice to, to be our only hope of eternal life, then we can confess Christos as Kyrios. He's Lord. Jesus is Lord. Christ is Lord. And He's not only the Lord, He is my Lord, my King, my Savior. Now what do you say? What can you say? Where is He in your life? They got the name because they suffered for Christ and they were not ashamed to preach about Christ. Thirdly, they were blessed by Christ. Look in verse 21 of the text. The Lord's hand was with them. A great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them. Encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord. And all, with all their hearts, he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. You see, they obviously were blessed by Christ. How did they get the name Christianos? Well, it wasn't because it was a little number hiding in a closet praying somewhere. No, this message was taking over Antioch. It was shaking people up. This message was stirring things up in the city. So much so that the center of the missionary movement that was started by Paul shifted from Jerusalem to Syria and Antioch. Changed locations because of the international city that it was. Third largest city in the world at that time. You had Rome, you had Alexandria, Egypt, and you had Syria and Antioch. You had Rome, Alexandria, and Syria and Antioch. The triangle. Missionary strategy. Going to take the Roman world. All this area is the Roman world. You had Rome, Alexandria, Syria and Antioch. All of this area, by the end of that Bible, that you've got in your hand. All of that territory was covered by the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you believe that? That's how it was. If you don't believe me, walk through any of those lands today. You can see the archaeological evidence of how the Gospel impacted that community for Jesus Christ. It's an amazing miracle of the, uh, of the biblical days. Now, when we think of how they were blessed by Christ and that they got their name because of what was happening. You see, Christian workers, not just any Christian workers, were working in Antioch. 
Barnabas went up there to make sure what was going on was good and God was working there. He went and got the finest of the missionaries, brought him down and they stayed put for a year, teaching every single day probably, proclaiming every evening, working probably during the day, proclaiming every evening the message of Jesus Christ because there were so many people who wanted to hear it. You see, this is part of the problem with modern Christianity is desire. When God is working in our life, we have a deep, deep desire to hear His Word. When God is working in our life, we have a deep, deep desire to know Him, to draw near to Him, to be with His people, to share together in fellowship in Christ. We are so busy in modern world that much of our desire is clouded because of our busyness. We hardly have time to open our Bible and read it. That's one reason this meeting is so precious today. You come and you hear and there's a spark. There's a light. There's a flame that's burning. You know that. You come and hear it and you know you're kind of attracted to that Word. You're kind of attracted to God and to the truth. You want to be there, but you have to make room in your personal life every day to keep that fire burning like the coals in the, uh, in the flame. To keep it burning. To keep it burning. Now, I have to say, you know, in my modern mind, I have to say there weren't as many distractions in the Bible days. Let's just tell ourselves that, okay? Okay? We don't sit, hear the lions roaring, right? We don't hear the chains rattling. We don't hear the prison doors opening and shutting. We don't hear them breathing down our necks to haul us off to prison either. Who was distracted the most? <laughs> It's all in how we look at things. And Satan wants us to be blinded, to think, oh, well, because of how my life is today, I just can't really be alive for God like those Christians were in those days. Do not believe that lie. You can be alive for God. Those Christians in those days walked through the valley, right? Now, Spend time alone with God. Time in repentance of your sin. Time asking God the Holy Spirit to search your heart out and to put His stamp upon you. <coughs> Spend time alone with God that He might fire you by, your, by His Spirit that when you rise up, you feel His presence. When you go out, you're thinking about Him. Spend time alone with God so those distractions finally get through all the cobwebs of your mind. Spend time alone with God so your Bible's dusted off and the pages become crinkled and marked. Spend time alone with God so that we learn to pray. The way we learn to pray is to pray. That's complicated. We don't need a course in it. We learn to pray by praying. Talk to Him. If you wonder, look at what Jesus said. Look, study your Bible about prayer. If you're wondering about it, study the Bible about prayer. Find out what it says. Talk to Him with an open heart and mind toward God. Learn to pray. Learn to be on fire. Lit with the fire of God's Spirit. Do not settle for anything else. Don't settle for it. If we settle for it, then we're not going to get what they have. That's life. The calendar is going to keep flipping. Time is going to keep passing. Generation after generation is going to go right over the edge 
into hell. And the modern church may be responsible for her failures. Who's that unknown church? Look at that person next to you. Look. That's that unknown church. Who's that responsible for this generation? Look at that person next to you. You are. Everybody's like this. Is it me? Is it me? No, it's sad. He's responsible, not me. Right? We don't want to think about it. We don't want to think about it. Who are the Christianos? Look next to you. Who are they? Who do we greet in the Lord every week? We see our faces. We shake our hands. We greet one another. We smile and we sing praises to God. We are the Christianos. Are we worthy of such a name? No. Of course not. But don't just throw it away because you think we're not worthy. Jesus said, if we're going to come after Him, we have to deny ourselves, take up a cross and follow Him. That's what He said to do. I don't know about you, but denying myself hurts. It hurts. But if we're to be Christianos, the way Jesus has called us to be, we must deny ourselves. We must take our responsibility for this generation so that it doesn't go over the edge. And you say, well, it's too far gone. Well, what about Roman Empire? How far gone were they? They're a, they're a name in history now. And the church of Jesus Christ is still alive. Right? Wow. I think I'll go with God. What about you? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh God, help us. Light the fire in us, Lord. God, help us, Lord. We're so far from what You intend. When Stephen went down... Lord, that was one of ours. He was one of ours. He went down. You stood up and welcomed Him. Hallelujah. When Philip went down in the desert, that was one of ours out in the desert. A man like us, obeying God, doing what you called Him to do, He's one of ours. Lord Jesus, I pray for this group today. Help us to realize this generation is our generation. And they're going to go over the edge unless we help them. God help us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.